This is a fantastic piece of artwork here in the park end at Goodison Park. Just look at the legends here. Dixie Dean, Gordon West, Dave Hickson, Alan Ball, Kevin Ratcliffe, Peter Reed, Alex Young. There are 24 legends here. 25, if we count him. Jimmy, welcome back to Goodison Park. I know it's only recently that you that you retired, but you're going to miss the place, aren't you? Oh, there's no doubt. I'm, just, I'm going to miss the people. Uh, fans have been great, staff have been great, players have been great. I've had a great journey. And you're a social media sensation. So I believe, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not on social media. You're not a Twitter media. or Instagram guy, no, are you? My, my missus is Mary, as in she's, uh, she's there. There's been thousands on all the sites, like, which is brilliant, isn't it? You know? I know uh, quite a few ex-players have been on. You've just been saying off camera there, big Norman Whiteside who was one of the first on. Yeah, big Norman. Yeah, what a character he was. He was a great lad. I remember sitting in there. Uh, we we we, uh, we played a, a game in uh, Dublin, and then we got, we all got on the coach. And Snod was on the coach. There's a few the lads. I think Graham Stewart was here, and we 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 we, we, we led, having a meal. Howard and Colin and a few of the staff. Next thing, Colin's come back from the tour. They went. What about that one? And I was going, what? He said, Storm and Norman's only trying to get a plane to get them back <laughs> from Derry back to Dublin. So anyway, the next day, they all get on this plane and they only left Tony Cotty, Martin Keon and Peter Brigid. He was only three left at the hotel. <laughs> the rest got on a private plane. And, and I said, look, do it if you want to do it. But make sure you're on that plane home back to Liverpool. And, uh, and, and they, they were. were. They were, <laughs> they were yeah. Brilliant. Let's go back to the beginning then, Jimmy. You've got a fantastic story to tell. What did you do before you got involved with Everton? I used to drive the coaches for, for these race coaches in Ashton and Makerfield. Uh, we had the Everton contract then. Uh, I was an Evertonian, so the lad who had the job before me, Cyril Williams, he was a great fella, Cyril, and when he, he come to be retired, he's where he asked me would I do the Everton job, which I, I couldn't wait to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I spent 12 months running around all the grounds with Cyril as a two-man driver job to, to find out where all the grounds were because there was no sat navs then, you know what I mean? So yeah. you, you just had to find your own way around. And uh, That's pressure, that, isn't it? You've got to get, a, yeah. you've got to get a, 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 what it was at the time, a first division football team to an away ground at yeah. just the right time. Yeah. Not too early and yeah. not too late. Yeah. And, I mean, to be honest, them days, there wasn't traffic like there is nowadays, mm. you know what I mean? What was it like driving to Wembley? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. To all the fans? The fans were fantastic. They were hanging on the wiper blades, hanging on the mirrors. And, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was, I'll never forget that experience because I went to, to Wembley in the 80s 11 times. Brilliant. Which is, is not one of me, many people with a coach driving record like that, is there? So you must have known your way by the time you've done that. Yeah, 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 I know my way, all right. What about when we had the great European night, uh, Fortuna Sittard and Bayern Munich and the final in Rotterdam? Did you have to take the players to the airport? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the Bayern Munich thing, that we, we, we'd go down and we'd stay in the moat house and, and then the lads would come back, I'd bring them back to the thing, and I'd watch the game, then I'd drive home with the bus and then I'd take them to the airport on away games like Rotterdam, I took them to Speak Airport and then picked them up at two o'clock in the morning on the way back on the old airport and the fans were all, all over. It was just brilliant, you know, you, like bring a tear to your eye, you know, when you, when you know you're doing so well. It was brilliant. So you watched the European Cup Winners' Cup final win on the telly, yeah, and then jumped on your bus and went to pick them up. Went to pick them up, yeah. Absolutely that was, brilliant. That was brilliant. You know, I've got late, I've got so many great memories of this brilliant club, and I'll never forget. You know what I mean? The lads of 1987 who won the league title for the second time in three years often speak about the return journey from Carrow Road, Norwich, when we won the 1987 league title. Even now, there's no quick way back from Norwich. So back in '87, that must have been some trip. Well, Terry Terry Dalligo, who was on the mic, he he, he was like Radio Everton. He was saying the radio, and people had to sing, sing sing a song or tell a joke and things like that. And we got onto the M6. I was only doing about 40 miles an hour on the M6, <laughs> and Howard went, Jimmy, Jimmy, 
slow down. <laughs> you know, things, things like that. Or he, or if you didn't, Terry Darico would hit you over the head with a mic. You know, so they, they were fantastic. The, lad, the players, the, every one of them were fantastic lads, you know what I mean? What about when you pulled up at Burton Wood for Snods to get picked I, up? Yeah, pulled up at Burton Wood services to let Snods up. You just stop at different services to let them off, like the Manchester lads. They'd, they'd, get, they'd get off in the Manchester area and then, and then anyway, I dropped Snods off at, at Burton Wood and they'd cut all his clothes. So when he got up to walk off the bus, <laughs> all his clothes just fell off him <laughs> and his missus was waiting outside in the car to pick him up. So they, you know, they, you, you only see that uh, from, from sitting in the coach driver's seat and you go, oh my God. <laughs> and he didn't have much good club no, then. No. Still hasn't. Uh, you mentioned Howard Kendall and you loved Howard, didn't you? Yeah, Howard was class. I remember and he offered me the job, I would. He went, uh, co come and see me. I was taking uh, the reserves to Manchester United on the Saturday, and I was doing a, 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 a reserve team game on the Wednesday. And uh, Howard was, was on the bus, he was going watching the reserves. That's what they'd done them days, you mm. know. That, and he, he, he come in and he went, come and see me on Saturday before you go to the reserves. I've got something for you. Well, I was a, I was a decorator in them days, I painted and decorated, that was my trade. And I used to do a little bit for Colin, I used to do a bit for Sharpie and Andy <laughs> Gray and all that, you know, in the summer holidays, you know, because I uh, had my holidays when they had their holidays. Yeah, yeah. So it was never going to be a problem. So I used to do little things for them, you know what I mean? And uh, so Howard just said, uh, anyway, I went in on the on the Saturday morning. I, I had an old Mini, that was like an old Mini Cooper S, which was a brilliant little car mm. them days, but it was a wreck. Anyway, I go in and I go into Howard's office and Jim Greenwood, who was the second to then, he was a fantastic fellow, Jim, well liked. And I sat down and he went, uh, we want you to be our kit man. Because Howard had been to Bobao and that was the go over there. They all had kit men looking after the players and all that. He said, uh, he said I'm, I'm going to organise you to go and see Norman Davis at Manchester United and have a few days with him. Right. and just pick a few things up. He said, you're going to be in charge of all the apprentices, so you'll give them all the jobs and, and make sure that everything goes well. So, uh, and, and uh, he said, come, come back in tomorrow and, and, and we'll have all your contract ready for you. So I went back in with my wife the next day, with my car, because uh, he, he, he did say, make sure you bring someone with you, not knowing he was going to give me a car. Wow. So I go in the next day, and then I uh, sit down in Howard's office. Jim, Jim was there as well, and I signed, I signed all the contract and all that. And it was like I couldn't believe I saw a company car. And I would, I went, is that a car? I would. <laughs> and, and he went, yeah. And there's the keys. I'll never forget it. It was like a silver grey Ford Orion gear. That was, you know, going mm -hmm. into my street with a Ford <laughs> Orion gear. Blimey, that won the won the pools. <laughs> So that was that was Howard. Howard was fantastic. That's class. So did you just have to get all the apprentices together and make sure that they took yeah. the kits of the yeah. lawn? Yeah, Colin was a massive help. Colin then, whatever you do, don't take anything off them. You're going to be the boss. I mean, you, you, so that's you, when it started. Yeah, and that, and that's when I started. To, you know, they, they they instead of going down the laundrette, they'd like put we had a, one big dryer at, at, at Belfield. And they used to throw all the gear, gear in, the, in the dryer and they'd come out like a rock. <laughs> so the players would have to put it on if they were doing a double session in the afternoon. So we had to stop all that. And then, so uh, we, we started sending them down to a laundrette. We had a local uh, Liverpool company doing the match kit. Yeah. But all the training kit was done by the apprentices. So we, we, we used to go to, down to the laundrette down in Eaton Road and uh, give them a load of pound coins and that, you know, the old pound, not that. And they, they go down, and you'd have a few characters like like Billy Kenny and things like that. And I, I had to learn quick because there was a few, you know, the, the, mm. these girls can, you know. <laughs> I, one day I went down to the laundrette just to check in them, and the, the, there was so much in the washing machines. The washing machine was hardly going round, and they were sitting <laughs> eating Mars bars reading the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to put a stop to that as well, you know what I mean? So I, I scoured the place and, and someone recommended a little laundry in St. Helens called Ravenhead. And uh, it was, wasn't was David Reed then, it was David Reed's dad and, and, and his uncle who run who run the, the, the laundry. 
and uh, they were they were fantastic. And we used to send all our training kit there when it was brand new, <coughs> and they used to stamp it up there. I, I'd take the apprentices down there, and and they'd stamp it all up and things like that. You know what I mean? So we had to start from scratch. Do they pick their own numbers or do you allocate them? We allocated them. Then we give them a list of the of the, of the ones that were there, and and it 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 go. Uh, oh, I'll have that number seven. You know, we, they got what was available. Yeah, yeah. So uh, has anyone ever asked for a number and you've gone? No, you're not getting that. Oh, loads. <laughs> loads, 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 loads. <laughs> Do you like it when the players swap shirts or throw the shirts into the crowd? I go mad. <laughs> and I mean, and I mean, go, I've had more arguments in them dressing room, lad. I'm telling you. So, so, so this is the dressing room up here, Jimmy. Do you remember it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must love walking down here and seeing but, yeah. your feet of the ears, your sharpies. Yeah. Rats. Well, I've had them all on the phone, all the lads have been on the phone. Yeah. There's my man, Howard. There you what go. What a man he was. There you go. He's the one that uh, all started me a big journey, lad. Great every time, man. Every time I walk in through the, the door of Goodison Park, it's better yeah. for Howard. Yeah, yeah, great man. Has this Fantastic. changed much? Not really, no. There's not a great deal no. you can do, no. is there? No, no. Hasn't changed much, no. Apart from this? Yeah. The media side yeah, of it? media side of it, yeah. That's gone big, the media. Yeah, but it had to do with the, the way the, the clubs were guessing. And the journalists used to just turn up at Belfield, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Wait outside. Yeah, yeah. So this is the home dressing room here, Jimmy. This is where we put the kit out. <laughs> it's, been, it's been so organised this week. Nothing's gone wrong this week. It's been fantastic. I tell you what, it's not like me, lad. Mine would have been out by now. <laughs> <laughs> this this kit room would have been fully equipped now from Thursday. There we go. You drove. This is what it was all about when you were... Uh, yeah. When you drove the coach down Wembley Way? I was the last one. Last one to be here. Me and Diamond are the last ones. <laughs> Have a bit of that. <laughs> You've been here a few times over the years, haven't you, Jim? Has this changed a great deal? No. No, they put new seating on and, and your panels on the wall, took away with the benches. No. Not changed the one bit. You must have seen everything in here. Narrow wins, great wins, heavy Fighting. defeats, narrow defeats, fights, <laughs> arguments. Over the years, obviously, yeah. what goes in the dressing room stays yeah, in the yeah, dressing room, but yeah. you must have had some great times in here. Brilliant times. I've had fantastic times. I've seen some brilliant players coming in here. I've seen some bad ones <laughs> as well, but I've seen some brilliant, brilliant Do you know lads. What? Over so. the years, and, and I've been here quite a while myself, We've been, I think we've been quite fortunate in that very, very few bad eggs. Most of the lads who walk through that door tend to be good lads. E even if they're not the best players. Yeah. It doesn't mean to say they're not the best lads. Mm. You know, we've, got, we've had lads over the years who, who you, you really want to do well. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And you know that they're, they're not going to be the best player, but to have them in the team, just have them in the dressing room, a bit of something about them, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's like it, it's being a good player. When me. you look at these these shirts here, one thing that hasn't changed over the years, obviously, is the size of the shirts. That's Seamus there. We'll come on to Seamus in a bit, I'm sure. How did Mikel Arteta sneak shirts out every week? He was a sneaky, sneaky <laughs> Spaniard. <laughs> no, I, he was. I mean, me and Mikel were very close. I used to meet Mikel in uh, in Mallorca at the end of the season. Me and Maddie would go and have a meal with him and his wife because he had a little place in, in Mallorca, so we we'd go out. And uh, we'd have a, a meal with him. He used to he used to give me all sorts of abuse, and I used to give him all sorts of abuse. <laughs> you could never work out how he was getting his shirts out. Could I you? used to he used to give him, come back to me in Spanish, and then <laughs> I, I actually tried to learn a bit of Spanish to have a go with him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, he tried to rob a shirt one day, and uh, we looked everywhere for this shirt. Where did he put it? Because he had the smallest soap bag you've ever seen in your life. It was rolled up tight as anything, and it was in the salt bank. <laughs> so we we could be took it out. Me and Tony says we're, we're doing the job that we took it out and we put it in the laundry. And then he went, he come at the end. He went, hey, you you find my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> and I was that embarrassed with him. I gave him the shirt. Said, yeah, make that your last. <laughs> it was great though, Michael. We've we've had a few characters who try and try it on. You know what I mean? But you've got to like jump on them straight yeah. away. No player. Ever got the better of me? I don't care who they are. They never ever got the better of me. Not even three times Champions League winner, 300 career goals, Samuel Leto. No, 
I remember going to Al Atalanta in the Europa League. He hadn't been with us long. And uh, he'd been in Barcelona and he'd been to Chelsea and all that. Anyway, he just took all his gear off and left it in the shower. So uh, Tony went, he's left all his gear in the shower. So I went in, it was number five. It was all his gear, his, his cycling shorts, his shorts. And I, I went, I brought him in. I bin, we, we have a bin in the middle of the floor. Yeah, yeah. And, and I went, uh, Samuel, I don't care where you've played, Barcelona, Chelsea, you're at Everton now, and you don't do this. You don't leave your gear in the shower. It's not our job to pick your dirty gear up. And I threw it in the bin. The dressing room just went dead silent. <laughs> and you know what? Me and him got on like a house on fire yeah. ever since. He appreciates it, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, just, you, just, you just want a bit of respect off them, you know what I mean? I'll give you respect, you give me respect. You don't give me respect, I'll, I'll make it hard for you. We were always a step ahead of them. Yeah. You know, we had, I mean, I don't know if I've ever told you about when Phil Neville come. Well, when Phil Neville come, I heard he was a great lad. Because what we used to do, I'd phone up, uh, Albert was a kid, man, yeah, uh, yeah. Man United then. And I'd phone Albert, oh, what's this Neville like, what's this Phil Neville like? Because I knew his brother weren't the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got the best one of the two. <laughs> so he went, Jimmy's a great lad. He's so, so, he's, you'll, you'll love him. You'll absolutely love him. So anyway, Moisey brought him down. Moisey used to say, give them a hard time. You know, Moisey was class. <laughs> Moisey, he'd go, give them a hard time, see how they react. So I, I, he'd come in, and we had like a, like you've know, been, you've been to Pitch Farm, where you have a, the, the door's like a half, it's like yeah, a, like a, a stable, stable door. door. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So he, he'd come in, he'd pop, pop his head in. I, 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 I'm Phil Neville. So me and Treble, we, we'd look at each other and went, who? <laughs> and he got, uh, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil Neville. I went, oh, all right, lad. How'd you get over Burton Wood? How did your passport? I thought your passport <laughs> wouldn't have got over Burton Wood. And he'd come and he went, sir. Uh, and we would give me his gear. And, and, and he'd go, uh, what shirt number would you like? And I knew that he was after 18. But we, we had like Gascoigne in 18, Rooney in 18. So uh, he'd go, uh, can I, do you think I can have 18? And 18 was available then. So he went, uh, can I have 18? So me and Trevor looked at each other. And he'd go, uh, Treble, you're the ones 18, Gascoigne and Rooney and all that. We've seen you play. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he just started to laugh, you know what I mean? And uh, as he walked away down down the corridor, I put my head through the door like that, and Moise was there, and I went, hey, by the way, we don't do d here. <laughs> <laughs> and he never forgot that day, you know what I mean? He, he was one of the best, wasn't he, Phil? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. brilliant. He just—he loved the club, by the way. Oh, he did. Absolutely, yeah. he, he got at it, club. didn't he? And we still speak to this day. Yeah, yeah. Just want to talk about the FA Cup again. You were the driver in '84, so how good, how special was it to be on the bench? We had Neville. Neville was our goalkeeper. Yeah. Now Neville Southall is one of the best men <clears throat> I've ever met in football. He never drunk. He was an absolute. He, he, I used to warm him up for games because I was. You know, he used to make me sure I was fit them days. Now I'd go running with Colin Harvey and things like that every day. So I was very fit then. And me and Nev would go get a cup of tea at the hotel, jump a taxi and go down and warm up. And on the day of Wembley, I'm looking for his shirts. I went, oh my God, I can't find Neville's shirts. Before the cup final? Before the cup final. I knew he did, I, I, I knew he did them because <laughs> I knew they were there. But he went, uh, he started kicking off Neville, and I went, so I was absolutely frightened to death, terrified, terrified. <laughs> and then uh, about 20 minutes after, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, f and he went, they're behind the door. Have a look behind the door, and they were there behind the door. <laughs> but that's, that's what he was. I mean, when, you, when you're doing jobs like that, you know, you're going to big games like that, they're all big games, every game's a big game to mm. us, but you've got to double check everything. We have, we have a sheet of paper and I, I'll do it. One of my other kit men will do it and we'll make sure that everything's double checked in that. But, and, and you've got to, do, that's why we, we were good at what we've done. Mm. We didn't make many mistakes in the, in, in the 30 years, uh, 34 years I was a kit man. Did you enjoy the cup final banquet? Yeah, a great night. I remember Duncan dancing on the table. <laughs> in his kilt. <laughs> in his kilt, yeah. Were you on the yeah. bus the next day, the open top bus? Yeah, that yeah I was on the open top bus. Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, and then we went to Magaluf on the Monday. On the Monday, <laughs> blimey, that was a trip as well. When we got to Magaluf, there was still like all Evertonians still there, blue and white everywhere. 
So we had a great, great time there as well. That was a, a normal thing mm. at the end of the season. You know, once you once you had a, a long season and things like, because you start you start in July till May, yeah. and you're working Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. It was 28 years before I had a Christmas Day with my kids. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so people don't realise what you've got. A bank holidays, you'd be you'd be working on bank holidays. You could be in Chelsea on your bank holiday. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So. You feel sorry for your family and things like that in them days, you know. It's a full commitment, isn't it? Yeah, it's a full commitment. <laughs> Best thing about that is, just here. Yeah. Graeme Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the diamond, what a, what a great lad he was. Yeah, fabulous, wasn't Fantastic. He? Yeah, you know, Jimmy, all the pictures. This is your first one, isn't it? <laughs> 1935, 36. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one, yeah, yeah. Look at the kit there. Look at the state of the kit. Little Wayne for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember the first time you saw Wayne Rooney, Jimmy? Yeah. He was about 12 year old. Colin Harvey pulled me one day and he went, uh, come and have a look at this kid here. He said, he's playing in the under 14s. And he said, uh, he'll play for Everton and he'll play for England. He's that, he's that good at that for age. England. Yeah, and, and Colin didn't give praise out easily, did no, he? No, no. Colin, Colin was uh, was one of them. He didn't uh, didn't give you any praise if you weren't worth it. He was he was great, and, and it was Rooney. And uh, he uh, actually when he when he actually signed as a pro, Rooney, it, uh, Colin had me picking him up at the house every day because I lived in Wigan then, and I used to come past his house every day, and I'd I'd pick him up, right. and bring him into the training ground. So um, I was got very close to Wayne. So, yeah, good kid, great Once player. Once in a lifetime talent, isn't it? Yeah, great player. To be that good yeah. at 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watched him grow up. Kept in touch as well with you, didn't he? Yeah. When he went to Manchester yeah. United. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I've really, really noticed about your job over the years, Jim, is the amount of gear that you have to take to away games when you load the bus on a Friday morning to go down to, to Chelsea, to Tottenham, to Fulham, to Brighton, Southampton, Bournemouth, what have you. The amount of stuff you have to take is unbelievable. Yeah, you, you do, Darren, but you've got to take it just, just in case you have a problem, you know what I mean? Uh, we take like four skips, two, two kip, skips, so, and then you've got, we're taking about 80 towels you know what I mean? Because it could be raining, pouring down. You never know yeah, what the weather's yeah. going to be like. You know what I mean? And then so many shirts, shorts, socks. You've got walkout jackets now. You things that you never had them days. You know, mm. a little bit older. They've all got uh, their own flip flops, haven't they? With yeah, the numbers on. You've got two. Every, every player when they come, they get a new two, new two new pair of trainers. One for the training ground, and one to take away. You don't. So, and it's just, it's the same. You have two pair of flip flops, two pair of trainers. So that all them trainers and flip flops for the games are kept in the training ground. And then as soon as they come for the games, we tick them off mm. on the sheet with the boots, and then they're all put on the on the bus on the buses. If you're not supremely organised, and I'm not just saying that because you're a pal of mine, if you're not supremely organised, that could go badly wrong, couldn't it? Yeah, you've got to be organised. That's the that's the main thing. You have got to make sure and double sure that you have got everything. Mm. You even take players who are fit, that somebody might, might get an injury before games, or, you know, or, the, or might be ill the night before. You, you can't get the kit down then, so you've got to take a few spur. Mm. And because of the Premier League now, most of the kit men from different clubs have a machine, have names and numbers at the stadium like we do. We, we didn't need it at the stadium because we just, all, just the shop had the same yeah, as us. Yeah. So if, if any kit man come down, like from, from down south or anywhere, we'd just get a blank shirt, we'd take a lot of the blank shirts with us. But we kept blank shirts and blank shorts on the bus. Mm. We'd have we'd have a home away and third kit all on the bus. So we were never short of, of kit, you know what I mean? So do the kit men help each other? Although yeah. you, 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 you're obviously rivals and you, yeah. you do anything to win the game. Yeah. If the opposition kit man comes to you and says, Jimmy, I need a couple of number nines. I need a couple of letter A's or B's. You yeah. can help them out. Oh yeah, without a doubt. We we all stuck together because we you never know you might need it when you go there. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't say no. You can't have it here because you know I've got a saying that every dog has its day. Yeah. And if they don't get you going over, they get you coming back. <laughs> so so you you've got to like make sure that you look after them. 
because you never know when you need them and they look after us because they never know when they need us and we all stuck together and we right right until the day I finished last week I've had so many kit men pull me up and wish me all the best when you're away your last job of a night is to put the, the leisure gear or the training gear outside the players rooms the staff rooms and sometimes that can go wrong yeah yeah it? but what what we do because it it's the start of the season like a pre-season we cut pieces of paper out you know to make little labels that we put in so we put like your your initials or other players number on and what we would do tony would do the staff i'd do the players and we'd put it all together and we'd put it on a table we'd put the staff one side and the players the other side but we'd be, be being that like i am i know that you get lights of osman hibbert <laughs> or baines they 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 would spot them on the corridor and they'd change all the labels so they put like Jimmy Jimmy Lums and who's only a little small three foot six and they they put him in like some like Trish Woods' kit who's extra large you know what I mean or put Moisey in someone else's you know what I mean so like they would come down in the morning like Jimmy Jim, Jimmy come down in the morning and he's got like this extra large kit of Woods's on and then Woodsy would come down with Jimmy Jimmy Clumpton, <laughs> looked like he'd somebody put a ball under his top, and he go, "What's going on? What's going on here?" And because Treble done the thing, I just went, "Well, you need to speak to Treble because he, he's done the kiss." Well, Treble was 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 like, you know, he'd easy bite, wouldn't he? Yeah. Uh, and he, he he go, "No, no, you can't. It's someone's been fiddling. someone has been met." And it, so as soon as he's then that messing about. You look at Baines and you look look at Ebert and you look at Osman and, and you go and they go, nah, not 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 me. Not 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 me. So we left it and, and we, but what we are is we're good at what we do and we'd already spoke to the things can we put the table where we can see what's going on and there was a camera there. So we knew we had the culprit. So after blaming them, because you, you automatically blame yeah, them. Yeah. You go to the hotel, fella, and you go, just uh, can we have a little look through the camera at such, about, such a time? And he would run it through, and you'd run it through, and you see different things, different. Then you see Phil Neville, because he was the one changing the labels. <laughs> and he was looking at the size of the T-shirt and looking at So you knew it was him. Mm. So anyway, the ne next day, Temple couldn't wait to get down for breakfast. And I, I, I pulled Phil Neville and went, you better, yours a bevy. And he went, what? what? I said, you was a big, a big, a big bevy. And he went, what for? We're moving all the gear. It's you. And he went, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I know. It's me. <laughs> so we just coughed straight so away. So we just coughed up straight away. So that was it. We already had him. And I apologised to the other three. <laughs> <laughs> Which usually was the other yeah, three, wasn't it? Yeah. Still jam toast every morning. Yeah, jam and toast every morning. I, that, I, I would sit down to my lunch at, at Finch Farm or Belfield and I'd have a jam butty. <laughs> and, and, and That's the, the secret to longevity, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, a jam the, butty. The, 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 the girls used to say, we've got like all sorts of dinners here, jam butty. The layout, Brought up on a jam butty, so I'm got, not going to change. The catering layout of Finch Farm for the first team staff and players <laughs> compared to the area of Belfield. Yeah, beans on toast. It's, it's a different world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You get a three course meal now at, at, at Finch Farm. Salad cart as well. At Belfield, you had a sandwich with Mary's and Mark all over it, but uh, they were the great times. Couldn't tell her though, could you? No, no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I remember Walter coming in for his dinner one day and she went, I hope you've not come for any dinner. He just turned around and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> the manager. The manager, yeah. She was, she was a cracker. We've spoken about some of your best mates that you've worked with and that countless since you first started at Everton. Socks. I know they're a bane of your life. When did players start to cut the socks just below the ankle? So all they had was the, the top bit. Marouane Fellaini. He was the first one I've was ever known first to one? do it. First one before any football club. You can ask all the kit men. They never done it, and he was the first one to do it. And uh, he didn't speak very good English, Marouane, and we give him down the banks. Because we didn't know who it was at first. So we were trying to keep our eye out to, and we found him one day cut the socks and we're you, it's you, it's you, it's you. And everybody started doing that. So in the end, we got Chris Hewitt to Rumbro to make us a cut sock. Right. So now, you, you see it now, all the socks are already, they come yeah. cut. So it saves them, because 
once they go in a washing machine and cut socks, they they, 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 just, they tangle up and, and just yeah. uh, they yeah. ruin the machine. So, but Marawan, Marawan was funny. We tried to teach him how to speak English and things like that, and uh, we used to say we go like flip flop. <laughs> you know, we come in, he come in and ask for like. So he said, he said they call him sliders. He go, he, he, so I said, Marawan, flip flop. So he go, flip flop. And I'd learn him. Yeah. <laughs> so one day he was rushing the horse. He said, Jimmy, 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 I have no flop flips. <laughs> so, so we just like burst out laughing. It's, I've told you it's flip flops. <laughs> you know, we same with Mikel. Mikel would come in and ask for like different gear and Spanish and all that. <laughs> just to wind us up, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. We've mentioned one or two of the characters along the way during this conversation, and, and as we said off camera there, you and I could sit here for four hours oh, and, and, and talk about the characters and the players and the friends we've made. The last one I want to mention is Seamus Coleman, who, for me, is probably the best professional footballer I've ever worked with. He's the same boy that came over from Sligo all those years ago. Seamus is a character. Uh, don't, don't, don't be kidded by the, 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 how nice he is. Oh, yeah. He can be a little winder-upper mm. as well. But he got it when he came in Arcade Room. He didn't get away with it. <laughs> and he, he knew, he knew in Arcade. He tried and like wind you up to different things, you know. I believe such a thing, and I believe such a thing. I mean, so I used to say, believe what you like, get out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had we've had some great last me and Seamus. He's, he, I've known him when he first came over so yeah. as a young kid, mm -hmm. and he went to Blackpool on loan. I actually watched his game when they got promoted to the Premier League. Yeah. Seamus was playing right back. Yeah. And he, he's always been the same. He's, he's down to earth, good character, great captain, mm. by the way. Uh, and he, he's, he's never looked back since. He could, and he's like me. This is a great club mm. to work for. Don't get me wrong. It's the best. I've, I've had Sammy Lee ask me to go to Bolton. I've been asked to go to Liverpool. I ain't moving from this club. This mm. is the best club. And I've met some great. You couldn't go to Liverpool. I would never go to Liverpool anyway. I don't sometimes don't even want to go and watch the game there. <laughs> but I love this club. I've, I've had a good journey on this club. It's been fantastic. I actually met Mary. My wife, Mary, was 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 a tour guide on here, uh, and I pulled her one day, and that was the end. Of the that was it. We got <laughs> married, and we've had a great life together. And so we're going to have a, a better life now. I'm retired. Jimmy, you'll never say it, but you are an Everton legend, and it's lovely to see you again. Brilliant, pal. Brilliant.